But in March 1923, Lenin suffers a stroke. The following January, he is dead. Stalin, Zinoviev, and Kamenev force Trotsky into exile. Then Stalin overrules his two associates and ends the new economic policy. In its place come three successive five-year plans, all designed to emphasize productive capacity, especially heavy industry and power output. From 1928 to 1941, Russia's industrial capacity rises nearly 300%. Her hydroelectric output is up nearly 800%. Agriculture production lags, however, and housing actually fails to keep pace with the population increase. If you're an average Russian, this means more work, not enough to eat, and less and less living space per family. If you don't work hard enough, or if you complain, there are plenty of trains to Siberia, where many hydroelectric dams are being built. These are also the years of the great executions called Yezhovshina, in honor of Stalin's executioner, N.I. Yezhov. How many people are permanently removed from circulation, no one knows. In some provinces, as much as 4% of the population vanishes. Kamenev and Zinoviev, who helped Stalin seize power, are quickly disposed of. To have been a friend of either one of them is now a crime. For this and related activities, well over half of the top communist leadership and thousands of lesser officials vanish, as do most of the army officers. A very few of Yezhov's victims are given trials. Some of the trials are remarkable. For example, Several defendants are convicted of conspiring with Trotsky in 1936 in the Hotel Bristol in Copenhagen. In actual fact, in 1936, the hotel was no longer in business. Next case, in 1938, Yezhov himself is purged, together with many purged judges, labor camp operators, and the like. <laughs> 